just just watch this game just watch this game you i i i guarantee you won't be disappointed guys you will not be disappointed <laughs> i know i've been doing a lot of karim recently i know i've been doing karim a lot recently but this just just watch this game honestly it's so good it's so good kevin kevin is finally realizing the power of a build order that i actually gave him so i gave kevin a certain build order i'm not going to spoil it but i gave kevin a build order it obviously a basic build order but kevin being a better player than i he's going to run with it and make it his own and do his own thing with it um so he's going to still be experimenting Hello, doing this build uh, but just you wait just you wait karim obviously does some insane stuff here as well like there's just moves after move after move and honestly when i was watching this game i did not know who was going to win it was so good so let's introduce the players everyone knows everyone's fan favorite skynet karim evet. the man the myth the legend i wonder if he's going to join our stream again I, I, if he blesses our stream again oh world complete going up against kevin Everyone knows Kevin. Everyone likes Kevin. He is arguably a top 10 player when he's playing certain civs. Exceptionally strong player. Always have good, always actually have really good games versus Kevin. I always enjoy playing Kevin. Uh, he, uh, but he is a very, very solid player. And this is Karim though. This is, this is Karim. And I, I don't know what it is. Karim has this weird spell that he plays better the better his opponent is. So the higher the elo Karim's opponent is, the better he becomes. It's just the way it is. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. It's just the way it is. Kevin in red on the right side here, picking up a couple of uh, water buffaloes. He's got a total of four now. He's going to be happy with that. Can't complain with four. Let's compare that to Karim. Looks like he's got one, two, uh, one, two. And he's eating one of them currently. So really wants to get that fast age up and look at the time. Around 2 minutes 20 without the house build is, is sort of where what happens. So 2 minutes 24 is pretty solid. Can't complain with that. With with food treasures, it's just insane. Let's have a look at this deck. He's going for his uh, old faithful capitalism. Does have that fort again like we saw with the Egypt Revolt game. He seems to be adapting and he seems to like the fort as opposed to free upped towers, which I like. This, this I like a lot. I'm picking up 60 coin there. He's aging up almost halfway. Looking pretty comfortable right now. As a TP in the middle of the map. And he's just going to be chilling, aging up with the Imam. Which I was told is their logistician, but the logistician went down to 800 food, I believe now. Which it clearly was the case because we saw him age up with 800 food. So the Imam age up actually is kind of interesting. It doesn't make your fortress age quicker, but it definitely did, gives it more, more XP. And can you put a price on 0.8 XP? You know, it's pretty good pretty good and you, you know you put them behind your base it's a pretty safe way of gathering xp especially if a tp gets taken down let's go have a look at kevin so going for 13 village up here pretty quick age up time as well he's gonna be that, that's a really good age up time probably got some food treasures picking up a trap settler very nice hasn't got it yet but he's just about to i love this french explorer it's like the female napoleon Oi, 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 oi. Uh, the, the female explorer was glitching out there. That wasn't so sexy. Nya, nya, nya. Agent with the quartermaster. Four bills is first shipment. Getting those. Oh, that's a very safe market. Did a mosque always give more XP than a church? No, I don't believe it did. But it is 0.1, I believe. I think a church gives 0.7 and a mosque gives 0.8. Maybe mosques are just more holy. Maybe mosques are more holy than churches. Controversial, I know. Controversial, I know. It's not controversial for me to say it, though, because 
like we said, I am now the arbiter of all religion. I believe in every religion, including atheism, which isn't even a religion. But I am an atheist and both a religious person in every aspect of every religion. Anyone who remembers the Karim versus Revnat game, you'll know why I'm now a believer. Should I say a Karima? Yeah, that one didn't land too hard. Classic spy coming in here. Just about going neck to neck, toe to toe with that scout. That scout put in some work against that spy, but that spy's still going to have plenty of HP to two hit an explorer. Which <laughs> Kevin is keeping very close to his chest here. He knows full well that that spy is out and he doesn't want any beef with it. 700 gold is coming. He did get a rack. So it doesn't look like he's made anything. So kind of a semi musk FF, but he's not made any musk. So basically a straight FF uh, with the four villagers first and into 700 coin. Can we just talk about his deck? Can we just talk about his deck? A lion mode. Hey, you, you thought I was making it up when I told you about this build order. That is a lion heart deck right there. That is a lion heart deck right there. All right. That's magical. That is magic right there. So we'll see what we're going to see. Thomas Starry. <laughs> Probably not so much a mystery. Now going up with Ancient Regime. He's aging up with the Bishop. The Greed right now. Imagine aging up with the Bishop versus Karim. That takes balls. That takes balls. And we like balls on this channel. We like balls on YouTube. And we like balls on Twitch. No. Hashtag no homo. Hashtag homo. It's all the same thing. Not really, but kind of. Do I know what I'm saying? No. Am I chatting bullshit? Yes. Bonjour. There comes that Royal Embassy Wagon. Let's see if he makes any Royal Musketeers. Five Musketeers coming out. Slow age up. But it's it's not actually that slow in the grand scheme of things. Because he didn't make any Musketeers. When that 700 gold came in, bang. He was straight into the age up. So it's not actually going to be that slow. Krim is aged up though. He's got those four Delhi now out. Oh, and that's that treasure villager right there. Unfortunately, it looks like he's going to meet its doom. Look at him. It looks like he's got glasses on. What a nerd. You deserve to die, nerd. Imagine wearing glasses in the 16th, 1700s. Who wears glasses in the 16th century? Nobody, because they weren't invented then. What a nerd. Get glasses before they were invented. Looking at Krim, he's sending in the moss construction. I, I did post a video yesterday on YouTube and my my fans on YouTube did uh, did tell me how to pronounce the one of the texts, the texts that give you free bombards, the the top two corpse. Huh? 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 That's thanks to my YouTube boys. Respect. Love you all. Love all my fans, which is none. Oh, that could have been a problem, but he does back it up, okay. Could have been a little bit of a problem, could have got sniped there. But he has got his musketeers out. So he is building some royal musketeers. And some normal musketeers. These royal uh, musketeers are kind of special. They're just basically better musketeers. We'll have a look here. 160 HP compared to 150. 22 range attack compared to 23. But the, the special power of these guys, and look at their little capes at the back. Look how cool they are. <laughs> These guys get a charged ability, uh, which is about double double the attack, something like that. I think it is literally double attack, uh, which which just makes their kiting ability so more much more effective than normal musketeers. Veterancy has come in for the musketeers. He's now going up to age four. This is Karim. Let's have a look at his deck. What he's gone for. So no spy he here. He literally the first card was just one thousand coin, and look how fast this age up is. Look. He's all two thirds aged up, and it's not even ten minutes yet. It's, it makes it makes punishing this build so difficult, especially if you don't age two push. But he's aging up. He's now getting the palace intrigue, and this is what I like. This is clearly why Karim likes this double uh, double mosque build. So everyone who's wondering, he's he's got two trading posts. 
and two churches, two churches, two mosques. And that's what allows him to be able to get that 1k coin, mosque construction and the palace entry card. So to get, or to squeeze all of them in just before you've aged up. And look at this timing now. It's just, the timing of this build is so good. It's sweet as a nut. It really is. In comes the top two courts. Choo choo! That's what I'm going to call these boys now. Choo choo bombards. Almost the tank engines. In they come. Three bombards. Going to do very well against Fort Royale here. The Royale with cheese. Has popped himself currently. But ten and a half minutes. Ten and a half minutes. There's three great bombards out in the field. I mean, he's, he does still have four Delhi. Plus an explorer with an eye of assassin crack shot. Like, you're going to need like ten cav to deal with this. And if you haven't built a stable, which Kevin hasn't, it's going to be difficult to deal with. He did age up with the three Spahi as well. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Look how much havoc these are causing. 18 bills for Karim. 30 for uh, Kevin. And Kevin's trying to go for the, the industrial build himself. I told you. I told you. I gave him a build order. I gave him a build order. And Kevin is following it. These three Spahi are slowing him down, though. He should be aging up by now. And these Spahi causing a massive issue. One villager just go down there. Just look at the damage these Spahi do. They're raid beasts. They have no negative multipliers versus villagers, which they actually probably should have. They should probably have like a 0.5. But they do 45 hand attack as it is. Can we argue that at least there should be a 0.75 negative multiplier? Talanus, if you're watching. That TC is definitely going to, going to be going down as well. Um, so that eight, that bishop age up serves pretty much no purpose other than buying some time for Kevin. He is going up for the age up as well. Shipping two Falconets, getting a little bit, a little bit of cold feet here. A little bit worried that he might be pushing in without any protection whatsoever. Looks like the two, is that the two TC wagon card? Oh, the Nizams are out as well. Damn, this is looking quite, this is looking rather scary now. Kevin, oh Kevin, he's doing it. Going for the Bourbon reforms, which costs 900 resources. 300 in each resource, and that's going to give him two shipments just before he ages up. Bravo, Kevin. Bravo. You are following my build order down to a T, and I love it. Love it. If we have a look at his build, he's going went for three bills, four bills, 700 gold. He did go for Ancient Regime, I think a little bit early, but seems to be working for him. He went for Fort, then 1K Wood. He hasn't shipped 1K Gold to do this industrial, though, so that's what I really like. He's just, he did get those market techs early on and it's paid off for him because he just needs to put villagers on golden food and that's how he got the age up. He did make a decent amount of musketeers as well on top of that. So that's just, you know, the power of the French economy really showing its colours there. We oui? He's running out of food though. He's not going to have too much access to food. So he's going to need to do something rather soon. Almost three villagers. Almost, uh, sorry, almost three shipments. <laughs> Uh, one of the reasons why France, I believe France have a really good industrial is because they, they're one of the few sieves that have access to four culverins, which is a, an in, actually a really insane card. Both tempo or stopping tempo of your opponent and because things like Great Bombards, Heavy Cannons just give so much tempo, so much destruction. So having four culverins is really insane. Uh, it's also worth 2,000 resources and the average is worth around the crate resource, which is about 1,600. So a lot of civs have kind of two culverins now, two falconets as one shipment together, or they have three culverins. But, you know, not many have that four culverins. I think there's only a handful. And that would, that's, that's I, as I always say, you know, that's such a good uh, sweet spot number. I know it's free to kill a great bombard in one. But great bombards, you know, even if they take one of them down or they you lose a culver and bang, you've still got that free left. So it, it makes a big difference. I, it sounds like I might be waffling there, but honestly, it makes a big difference having four as opposed to three. It's just that extra security as well. He's now aged up. He did age up with the gold as well, with the 1k gold. And what I like to do with that 1k gold is go straight into the Bourbon Allies. A really great shipment. Gives you veteran Bourbons. 25 of them which is pretty damn good. You can hugely overpop as well. So you can make a load from the Royal Embassy, ship this in, and you can overpop by like 20 or so. And it's really, really good. 
Um, I believe that does automatically give them the veterancy tag, as you can see. I did mention this to Kevin as well. His Royal Musketeers currently are just age one, or sorry, age two Musketeers. But bang, that shipment comes in. It does Shadow Tech all of them into veterancy as well. And he now has 39. He now has 39. Going for the field guns upgrade. Interesting. Not sure. He's only got two of them, so not sure why he's doing that. Royal Guard Bourbons. Look how quickly that tech comes in as well. So now he's going to have Royal Guard Musketeers, which is the equivalent of Guard Musketeers. Um, but they're better because, like I said, they've got that pistol charge attack, which is double the attack. So, yeah, looking really, really good right now. Two heavy cannons. It's just shipment after shipment after shipment. And that's the power of that Ancient Regime card. But Karim has a plan of his own. In comes those huge Spahi. Which just have... Uh, it's insane. It's the church tech. He's got the top two corpse here as well. With the three great bombards. Which are going to do so much damage. And the Colvins. They don't know what they're doing. They can't find their arse from their fucking hand. Oh, the two heavy cannons are going to get sniped by Karim as well. Finally, the Colvins start doing the damage, but the Great Bombards have done so much damage to the Bourbons that the Nizams, I think, will clean up here. There is still two Heavy Cannons. Uh, sorry, two Falconets. Those Heavy Cannons going down is a massive shame. They weren't even firing at the Nizams there either. The Abbas guns are going to be able to clean up. And actually, even Stevens, really. If Kevin can keep these Colvins alive. Oh! Ho, ho! Did you see that? Wolverine's just killed like five Abbas guns in one. Honestly, people people underestimate mass Wolverines versus low HP skirmisher type units, which Abbas gun arguably is because it only has 130 HP. Bang! Look at look at the damage those Wolverines are doing to the Abbas guns. Damn. So uh, looks like a bit of a, I'd say a fair trade. Do I think anyone came out on top? Kevin's micro could have been better there. Uh, I mean, Karim's micro could always be better, but Kevin's could he could have cleaned that up so much sooner if he didn't lose so many uh, musketeers to those great bombards. Oh, he would have he would have definitely won that uh, a little bit more convincingly. Thirty-seven bills for Kevin. Karim on thirty-eight, actually on more. Wow, and he he has been on free TCs for uh, free TCs for quite a while now. Shoot. Two bombards being shipped. Did ship that nine cavalry archers. Interesting that he goes for two covered wagons as opposed to two uh, one of his factories. Uh, in the long run, that's better to ship two factories. But in the short to midterm, it's definitely more effective to have a factory wagon. It's basically like an instant eight veils if you upgrade it. At least eight veils. So he's doing pretty well right now. Making some cavalry archers. That's uh, definitely the unit to build. They shadow tech to veterancy because they're only an age free type unit. So that means you don't have to spend that investment getting them to vet. They're also just better than Janissaries at being anti cav. And generally, cavalry archers are a weird unit. In, in Legacy, they never used to be that popular at all. But in DE, they kind of are a better musketeer. And you better believe it. Kevin has just revolted to the revolutionary France. The glorious revolution. Francais. Si. Bonjour. And there they are. Now, this is, the, this is exactly what Kevin asked me to do. I didn't want to give it away earlier, but Kevin goes, right. I need a build order for the French Revolution. Give it to me. And this is it, baby. This is it. He's This is like one of his first few games doing the French Revolution. And he's already pulling it off better than I am. Uh, one thing that makes this revolution so goddamn good is that you can batch train the... You can batch train the San Scolottes. Uh, and look how quickly they get built. It's basically like a fast military unit being made. But they do serve as still a villager. Like, these guys, you know, they still... It's only about half of what a French Coy de Vore gives, but it's still 0.4 wood there. It's still 0.6 food on berries. It's still 0.66 on gold. And now you can batch train. So technically, really, you can boom even better in the French Revolution because you can batch train. You have the ability to batch train these units. 
Um, I did give I did give Kevin a couple of tips as well on certain good cards. He's trying to ship this card here, Client States, which gives 500 gold and five revolutionaries per TP you have. You can see here he's trying to get some TPs. And uh, if you get if you get like five TPs or even four TPs, it's 2k gold and 20 revolutionaries. It's so insane. It's a really insane card. And I do actually believe um, that this revolution is being slept on a little bit. I, I do regard this as, other than Chili Revolt, I would say this is probably the best revolt in the game. He only had two TPs up at the time, so it looks like he was only able to get 10 revolutionaries and 1k gold. But that's actually still a 2k resource shipment with two TPs. So that is that is still a pretty good resource value card he's got there. The Gar Cavalry Archer are coming in. Oh, and that's a lot of bombards though. There is two heavy cannons. If as long as Kevin has a way of dealing with these artillery pieces, watch these guard cavalry archers. They will not do a dent into these scan squalotties. One thing to note though, Kevin has forgotten to send pioneers this game. You can't send pioneers once you're in this revolution. You have to send pioneers before you revolt. And it does give these sand squalotties like, what, 300 HP or something like that. Something ridiculous. But these guys, take a look at these stats. They are their villagers. But at the same time, they have 23 ranged attack, which isn't bad at all. They have double bonus versus artillery. Double bonus versus heavy infantry. Two times versus pet. But the most important thing is that they have 40% range resist. 40% range resist. These, these, these cavalry archers are doing about 10 damage. The great bombards, though, they will do a lot of damage. But look at these guys. Look at these cavalry archers getting absolutely slaughtered. There's musketeers in there. There's a couple of revolutionaries as well. But it's the sand squalotties that are doing the backbone of this army. And that's essentially why the revolution is so effective. Look at that bombard just go down to one hit. No melee involved. Now shipping in the guillotine, which gives resources. I think it has something and sets ranged attack bonus against hero to two. Um, yeah, rather a bizarre card. Uh, you definitely want... This gives 1,500 resources right now. Uh, Sans Scalottis and fixed more damage against heroes. Uh, it feels like you want to save that card generally. Or it's a good card to send against China or Aztec. You know, those sort of civs that have insane uh, hero HP. But now, and this is, the, this is the great thing about this revolution, is look at the scores as well. Look at the score right now. Like, he just cleaned that army up from Krim. Krim is going to be doing good. Yeah, he's on 70 bills, so Bosniak's coming in as well. So he's doing fine, but Cavalry Archers are not going to do well versus Sand Squalots. So yeah, these Sand Squalotties, uh, I mean, he, he, can decide, he can do whatever the hell he wants to do with them. He can decide to push. He can decide to boom, continue booming, put them on food. You know, he can push. Uh, what I would like to do is they, they want to be on these herds uh, to be able to produce more of them. So you want to dominate the map right now with the Sand Squalotties as part of your army. And then once you've got the map control, just put them on food. Some nice macro going on here by Grim. He's got plenty of resources. Bosniaks coming in. Uh, Bosniaks will actually do well versus Sand Squalotties. The one thing they are quite weak against is cavalry, mass cavalry. They don't actually have any bonuses versus cav, nor do they have melee resist. Attack! Big Kaleli coming in. You're coming in at a great time. Yes, you really are seeing this. Karim versus Kevin, and Kevin has revolted to the French Revolution. Wow, five horse artillery coming in. But that's not what's going to do the damage. The damage is the Sand Squalots. There's what's going to do the damage to these guard, uh, guard cavalry archers. Kevin... This is I, I I'm so I'm so glad it's like a uh, it's like having a son who surpassed his dad. I'm the dad and Kevin's the son. Uh, when it comes to this revolutionary like this revolution, like Kevin is really making this his own now. He's just popping off with this. Absolutely love to see it. Shipping in the 1500 resources, 500 in each resource. Both his factories are on heavy cannons. That was a French kiss. That's what they do, isn't it, in France? Kiss on the cheek. 
Gay. And look, this is exactly what he's doing. Look, he's taken the map. These Sansculottis get 0.7 food per second. So he's really... Now he's deciding to push in a little bit. Made a couple there. Just the heavy cannon production. These guys, yeah, going to collect that. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Karim adapting, making some culverins. Does have some more Spahi now as well. Score's really caught up for Karim. So he's bounced back really hard there, which is nice. Spahi are going to be the perfect counter here. Now imagine Mamelukes right now like this. I'm not sure why Karim likes to have Bosniaks in his deck because Mamelukes are so much better. Uh, Mamelukes would be really difficult to kill for Kevin right now. Has seen them, so I think he's going to decide to back up a little bit. I think it's safer to come over here. Going to be picking up those resources now. Both his factories are on gold. I'm not sure what that's going to be for. Maybe he wants to make culverins. Karim on 73 vils. He did lose a few vils there. Explorer is going to go down there by the looks of it. Did get the eye of assassin cracker shot. That's, that horse is sleeping on the job there. Get up. You're in a battle. This is the one thing these Sansculottis are bad at, and it is <laughs> killing villagers. Yo, big Kaleli coming over here. What, what was that raid? Big raid of 27. Yo, how you doing, Kaleli and folks? Is Kevin trolling? No, Kevin is not trolling. He's playing his heart out here. Not trolling at all. This was definitely the build order. And I've spoken to Kevin, and he is loving this build. He is absolutely loving this build. He's really enjoying it. He's almost gutted he wasn't doing it sooner. And I said, hey, I've awoken the masses. You know, I tried to do what I could. I've inspired Kevin, and now I'm sure Kevin, being a better player than I, will inspire the masses. And I hope anyone watching this, because uh, this, this is going to be going on YouTube, regardless of who wins this. I hope this inspires the masses for people to start doing this. Because it's such a fun revolt. Clearly a lot of thought has gone into this revolt by the developers. Uh, I think they've done an absolutely fantastic job. I'd I, I would love to see more revolts oh, like this. Oh, yeah. Yo, big B stat. B underscore stat just subscribed. Shit. Loving the revolt content. I'm Cheers. loving you. I'm loving you. Cheers to you. Here, look. Cheers, sunshine. Clink. Thank you very much for the prime, big boy. Appreciate it. 18 months. What a boost. And uh, we are all about the revolts on this stream. I love revolt changes. I love revolts becoming... You know, I love revolts not just being all in crazy batshit, you know, things. Uh, I love having unique revolts like this. Because it's basically like playing another civilization. That's that's what this is. It's basically like playing another civilization. Uh, Karim on 80 bills. Going for more spy here. So... Karim doing really good. And he's actually up in school right now. Let's have a look over at Kevin. And believe me, guys, this game gets better and better. Oui. He's just, he, you know, he's happy sitting on berries. Oui. Let's have a look, see how many. Currently on 55 Sansquilottis. So definitely lots of more room for another, what is it, 25 or so. Karim taking the middle of the map here. And do my eyes deceive me. Kevin wants this. I can I can feel it. I can sense it. Kevin wants the Napoleonic era. Oh. Oh. Oh, there it is. Oh. And it, I, I can't even... There's there's so many changes. Right? I, I, I would have to spend a whole stream just explaining all the changes that this Napoleonic era gives. Going up to this revolt, the Glorious French Revolution... You know, it changes things about the Royal Guard, the Royal Musketeers. It gives you the church text to get the Grenadiers. But the, Napole the Napoleonic era, that's that's a really difficult word to say so quickly as well. Era. It's the Na Napoleonic era. That's it. I have to say that slowly because uh, Napoleon is quite a odd sound to make for an Englishman. It's almost like I'm, I'm being a traitor to my country by saying the word Napoleon so much. 
and 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 there's, there's something about this this revolution is like the the best revolution in the game it's the most fun revolution it's the most intriguing revolution um and, it, and it's the french but it's okay that's okay I come to terms with that now i love my frenchy boys i love my i love my kevins and my gigs and look at this look at that flag as well by the way look at the flag look at that flag blowing in the wind isn't it glorious so now he's revolted the Royal Embassy takes the Royal Musketeer to the next level. It changes them to the Foot Carabiner. 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 This guy has... This guy is basically the Musketeer with the mortar attack, with the grenade launcher. Look at these stats! Look at those stats! With the grenade launcher tech. <laughs> They're better than age 5 Musketeers. I keep telling everyone this, that this, these musketeers are better. Than, this revolt, the glorious, the, the Napoleonic, uh, Napoleonic era is better than age five, in my opinion. You get to spam all of these Royal Embassy units. You get the, the horse carabiner as well, which is the, the second unit you get from the Royal Embassies. It's not just the musketeers. You get those goon type units with a strong hand attack. And he's going to be spamming that out as well. And look at this overpop right now. Oh, and he's even shipped the 100 days card. We, this is, there's, there's so much about this, this revolution. And it's just shipment after shipment after shipment because you get lots of XP. Just shipping this, this, this card gives you 220 XP. It costs 1,500 resources, but it gives you a musketeer for each unit you have lost. He's about to get 100 musketeers. 100 musketeers. Although hold your horses, it's not as good as you think. Because it does basically give you Russian musketeers, H2 musketeers. Although he does have the veterans he tech for them, so it is slightly better. <laughs> Look at these boys! <laughs> I double click them and I can't even get the full 100. These guys, look at this. Look at this overpop. And it's only about to get sweeter. He can still ship the grenade, uh, the grenadier techs. Please. Which he's doing! <laughs> <laughs> the Sansquilottis as well. Imagine if he pushes in with all of this. Oh, it's, I can't keep up with everything. There's so many cards to talk about as well. There's so many good cards here. He's going for the Imperial Old Guard, which I actually think is quite a bad card. But it lets your Grenadiers have more resistance. Um, there is actually a fun Grenadier card here, which allows your Grenadiers to mine, chop wood, and construct buildings. Yes, Grenadiers can become half villagers. Why? Doesn't matter why. Just because. Now he's getting the middle guard, the old guard. And I think they're the final ones. Look at the skins on these bad boys. Oh, that's one of the things I loved about the, the recent updates is that everything has a separate skin. Everything has its own unique feeling. And look at this. You cannot tell what each unit does right now. <laughs> he's over. He's currently on 352 pop. Yes, you are seeing this correctly. How does Karim stop this? These horse carabiners are age five units as well. They have 48 hand attack. Why? I don't know why. He's got 100 veteran musketeers. Stan Squilottis with 40% with range resist. He's got crazy old guards which have 86 siege, 74 hand attack. He's got these foot carabiners which are musketeers on steroids. He's got an insane amount of heavy cannons and other uh, bits of artillery. <laughs> and Karim's revolted to Egypt. Oh my goodness me. This is the craziest game I've ever seen. And, and as much as I enjoyed watching the Egypt revolution for the first time the other day, yesterday, there's just no chance of... He's still overpopped. He still can't make units. And that was everything Karim had. Even a revolt. He's now shipping in Imperial. The ability to get Imperial upgrades for all his units. Yes, these guys can get Imperial. They can also ship this card. Oh, and he's already given up. He can also ship this card, which gives an extra two multipliers versus heavy cab. So French goons, dragoons, are the best dragoons in the game because they have they can get a times five multiplier. An Imperial Dragoon with a times five multiplier against Heavy Cav. 
its namesake, Glorious Revolution. The Glorious Revolution. Oh, I, I have no words. That was nothing but glorious. Kevin. I gave Kevin a, a very basic build order with this. And Kevin has just made it his own. Just made it a fantastic, awesome build. And it was just beautiful. It was beautiful to watch. Absolutely beautiful. Has a shipment here. Which gives two additional revolutionaries for each shipment you sent. Currently could have been 38. There's all sorts. There's like a... For almost 2k gold, you can get five Mamluks and five Gatling Camels. There's the three Heavy Cannons and three Horse Guns. I think he shipped that card. Uh, Infinite One, Heavy Artillery. Uh, you know, French Royal Army allows you to Musketeers and Halberdiers to get um, uh, promotions. You can stop your opponent getting shipments with some of these some of these things. There's just so much insane. You've got flying battery and uh, Grabuvial system, which just makes uh, your heavy cannons insane. They fire faster with this, and they do more damage with this. Like, there's just so much cool stuff um, about this about this revolution. There's there's so much unexplored stuff as well, and it was just absolutely beautiful. And uh, yeah, there you have it, guys watching now. I jizzed my pants. I hope you jizzed with me. We basically had one massive orgy. Guys watching on YouTube, this is this is from the past orgy. You'll be you'll be jizzing in the future. Um, again, I'm talking smack. I don't care. I'm excited.